Well, you've made it market participants to the finish line of 2021. Welcome to another Three Things in Credit. I'm Van Hesser, Chief Strategist at KBRA. Each week we bring you three things impacting credit markets that we think you should know about. For two years now, you've navigated the twists and turns of COVID and endured a phenomenal surge in issuance. You've earned a break. Before you fill your cup with eggnog, one last three things for 2021. All right, let's get started. This week, our three things are, one, linear thinkers. The crowd that believes that the recovery will be a straight line runs the risk of pushing the Fed into a recession-producing policy error. We'll explain. Two, geopolitical hotspots. As the Biden administration focuses internally on navigating America's toxic politics, the likelihood of flare-ups abroad increases. We'll tell you what we're watching. And three, Corporate earnings are forecast to rise 9% year-over-year in 2022. Getting there requires a benign backdrop. All right, let's dig a bit deeper. I admire the world linear thinkers believe we live in. We're getting from point A to point B as a straight line. Journeys along a straight line can be easily modeled. That world is logical and predictable. There are plenty of linear thinkers out there among economists and strategists weighing in on where we're headed. It's a relatively simple exercise. Just consult the model. All we need to know is in the model. Past is prologue. We got this, they say. Problem is, there is no relevant past here. In the past century, that's forever in the world of finance, we've never had a shock this great, relief this gigantic, or a threat that is constantly changing. And this is coming at a time of great fundamental change in the economy, courtesy of technology. So that straight line linear thinkers believe exists is full of twists and turns in the form of coronavirus variants, economic scarring, supply demand imbalances, but also innovative workarounds and scientific breakthroughs in treatment protocols to name but a few. The linear crowd missed the effects of the pandemic on labor force participation, Miss the effect of sinking sentiment on consumer spending and small business vitality. Miss the impact of Delta back in the summer and fall and are missing the disruption that is happening with Omicron. We also believe that they are missing the nature of the inflation we are seeing. Full disclosure, we have always been in the transitory. We've not retired that word, camp, meaning that the inflation we're seeing is driven by a readily identifiable problem on the supply side That will fix over some reasonable time frame, call it a year or two, and we're already six months into this. The linear crowd believes the extent of the dislocation is known with precision, see Larry Summers or Bill Dudley, which makes the policy response known, tighten immediately and aggressively. There, the model works. Well, here's what we know. One, the extent of the dislocation is not known. Two, We know the dangers of undershooting relief. See the GFC. And three, we can see many leading indicators of inflation, commodities most notably, correct in due course. So on battleground inflation, Federal Reserve Chair Powell, who has been a lightning rod for indignant linear thinkers calling for the Fed to tighten in the face of the supply-side dislocation, said in recent congressional testimony that the supply-side problems are, quote, highly unusual and very difficult, and, get ready for it, very nonlinear. He added that it's really hard to predict those things. But our biggest concern is that peer pressure from the Linear Thinking Economist Club will push the Fed into a recession-producing policy error by demanding rate hikes just when the economy is slowing and the supply-side issues are resolving. All of a sudden, we no longer have a supply problem we have a demand problem. That's one sure way to cure the inflation problem. But that won't be good for credit. This has been our view for some time. We did notice that in a recent B of A investor survey, 46% of credit investors cited a central bank policy error as their top concern. And we saw similar commentary out of PIMCO. Keep a close eye on how these twists and turns evolve in 2022. All right, on to our second thing, developing crises around the world. Have we gotten complacent about geopolitical risk? 
As we head into 2022, we worry about global hotspots that could erupt into something that unsettles markets. With the U.S. embattled at home with its divisive politics, the time is right for aggressive nation states to act on rogue agendas, to test an administration that didn't distinguish itself in its first challenge, pulling out of Afghanistan. Topping the list at the moment is Russia building up troops on the Ukrainian border. Seven years ago, Russia seized part of southern Ukraine, and despite denials that it has no intention of invading the former Soviet Republic, Russian President Putin has referred to Russia and Ukraine as one nation. Ukraine is also highly desirable from Russia's strategic interest in that it acts as a buffer keeping NATO from encroaching on Russian borders. All this might just be posturing on the part of Putin as a way of keeping NATO in check. In any event, this is live, and Russia continues to mass troops that could reach invasion size in Q1 2022. The Ukrainian defense minister believes Russian troops will reach that level at the end of January. Credit implications here will be seen in European and energy names. China and Taiwan have come off the boil for the moment, but potentially have even greater consequences for markets given the U.S.-Chinese codependency in terms of their economies. But as we talked about last week on the podcast, Chinese President Xi is incentivized to keep drama to a minimum in 2022 as he looks to secure his leadership position within the Communist Party. Given his long-standing desire to unite with Taiwan, investors always have to think through the possibility that China acts in a more aggressive way toward Taiwan than the current military exercises it is currently engaged in. No event we can think of would upset the world order more than China invading Taiwan. It certainly bears watching. And finally, no discussion of geopolitical risks would be complete without touching on the Middle East, where Iranian nuclear talks have taken a turn for the worse. Iran securing nuclear capability might be an inevitability, and the West's response would likely be varied in terms of how its condemnation would be implemented. Israel's reaction, however, would likely be far more direct, and that would surely unsettle global markets. All right, on to our third thing, corporate earnings and its upbeat forecast. So if we set the stage for corporate earnings in 2022, we see the following. Still strong growth in real GDP. The Bloomberg consensus is 3.9%, or roughly double the Fed's longer-term growth estimate. Courtesy of the effects of stimulus still flowing through the economy. We also see above-trend growth globally, with the Bloomberg consensus sitting at 4.4%. And we're seeing inflated savings and record high net worth in the U.S. among its consumers. All that points to a very favorable backdrop for corporate earnings. Analysts are forecasting growth of plus 9% year over year for the S&P 500, or nearly double the longer term average of 5%, according to FactSet. 10 of the index's 11 sectors are forecast to show gains, with only financials showing a decline, And that is largely due to the going away of extraordinary windfall profits related to loan loss reserve releases. Analysts are clearly expecting cyclical sectors to rebound strongly in 2022, led by industrials, which are expected to grow 36% year over year, with all but airlines within the group expected to report double-digit gains. Now, it should be noted that airlines are expected to turn its $15 billion loss in 2021 into profits of $4.5 billion in 2022. Now, if we exclude airlines from the group, earnings growth among industrials is expected to be a still strong 17%. The healthy backdrop is expected to produce 7.3% revenue gains across the S&P, with all 11 sectors showing positive revenue growth. Underpinning the performance is a continuation of above-average margins, as companies remain successful in the aggregate of passing along higher input costs to its customers. The net profit margin for the S&P is expected to be 12.8% in 2022, and that compares to 10.5% averaged in the five years prior to the pandemic. Obviously, the course of the pandemic will be the single biggest variable affecting earnings. Safe to say that these forecasts imply the pandemic becoming endemic early on in 2022, a call that Omicron might have something to say about. We'll know more in the next several weeks. So there you have it. Three things in credit. One, 
linear thinkers. The crowd that believes the recovery will be a straight line runs the risk of pushing the Fed into a recession-producing policy error. Two, geopolitical hotspots. As the Biden administration focuses internally on navigating America's toxic politics, the likelihood of flare-ups increases. And three, corporate earnings are forecast to rise 9% year-over-year in 2022. Getting there, however, requires a benign backdrop. As always, thanks for joining us. Don't forget to check in on KBRA.com for our latest rating reports and research. Enjoy the holidays, and we'll see you again in the new year. Stay safe.